Hello everyone and welcome back. I hope you all enjoyed your break. Today we are resuming our lecture series on The Keepers. If you recall, we last left off with Virgil and Jaquees returning to the Keeper Fortress after a few hours of free time inexplicably became a life-altering experience. Bloodied and bruised from an encounter with some large feline Pokemon, they came across a mysterious shrine in the Shiitake Forest that left them with more questions than answers as they were confronted by phantoms of their past, present, and future. We now find our young initiates standing in the Great Hall of the Fortress at the end of their strange field trip, in need of some good rest before their next mission tomorrow. Will the other Keepers be suspicious of what Team Catapult has been up to? What has become of the foul creatures they caught in the wilderness? And whose bodily functions will be talked about way too much today? Let's find out in our latest installment, Mental State. Hello, friends. We are back. Where we last left off, uh, you all had quite the evening. Proportionally, like, you did a lot of things with a little bit of free time. Did a, a whole, whole lot. Had some experiences, to say the least. Incorporated and, an LLC. Yes, you, you have started your new small business. Team Catapult. <laughs> Team Catapult. Until we find a better something. Something, something more, more propellant. propellant. Yeah, yeah. But, but for right now, the ca Team Catapult, just because it's the most propellant thing that you know of. It's the only thing that I can think of of that category. <laughs> Have we ever seen a trebuchet? Probably just a catapult. I mean, Team Catapult sounds better. Right. Team, yeah, team, team trebuchet, team is, trebuchet like is Aldi brand. Really like, cool. French. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you be French? <laughs> we love so. all French people. Maybe not all French people. I'm sure there's French people that aren't great. <laughs> <laughs> On the whole. Yeah. If you're listening to this and you're French, hello. Joe would like to apologize. Bonjour. <laughs> for, from all my pronunciations. But so we had left off uh, with you all making your way back to the Keeper Fortress. It's not super, super late at night. The adults are still up and about. But you... <laughs> I love to imagine that it's like... They were just playing cards. Like 8 o'clock, and we're just like, oh, we're so sleepy. The adults are playing adults Catan are like, in like the great room. Can we put the room. kids up? No, no, they're playing Catan. I'm going to take them all to task. My intelligence is way too high now. So are we walking in the dining room? Like, is it, is it like a hall or... You, you like come room. into like the, a great hall. So they've got a large table where they have dinner and everything. You know what? I'm I'm deciding right here. <laughs> yep, they've got uh, they've got just a little game sesh going on. Uh, so Pandora Yield is Cotton. Pandora is the one who is sitting closest to the door, though. Uh, so you all walk in. She she looks at you and just says, "Are you boys okay? Hail and well met. I don't know. M met well met. I need some more blood, or at least to, like, He needs fix more blood. Like, a lot more blood. God, it's so good to see you guys. Can I tell you, I'm not scared of you anymore. And I'm excited, really, honestly. I'm excited, I to, I'm excited to work here. <laughs> Do we have, like, bandages again? Like, like, a lot. Like, we need bandages. Yeah, as you all are saying these things, Amelia, like, just makes a beeline over to you, and I think just like one of you in each of her arms just like scoops you up and takes you back to like the infirmary. This oh, was very motherly, so strong, matronly. caring. Mm. I don't, I don't like that. I, mm, but <laughs> <laughs> we did have the but same it, impulse though. But it was, it was, it was the heart of a child. Mm. Like mm, this is cozy, not mm, big woman. <laughs> Just wanted to correct that in case anyone got weird ideas. You just want to clarify that it wasn't weird for the for the co-designers that draw art for us. <laughs> wow, you smell like cinnamon. What did we miss? How are you doing? You do smell like cinnamon. She said, "Oh well, you did miss dinner. That's okay. I I, I made you a little plate and I, I tucked it away for you." Uh, and so she is currently bandaging your wounds. And she uh, she said, "So um, sounds like you boys uh, had a had a busy little evening there." Kieran is uh, well, he had to, he had to leave dinner early, go out back because there just there was just more and more uh, Pokemon just coming in there, teleporting in, and uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a mess back there right now. Is it contained? Is uh oh the big cats? No. It, yes. The thing. I don't know. Um, the, uh, I mean, it was really just those two, those two big guys. Everything else was, you know, they were. They it were didn't just, come here. 
<laughs> Where did it go? I have to see Kieran, and I run off. <laughs> It could be anywhere. He's like he's like running through the halls like I, 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 I stay with Cinnamon Mom. <laughs> you stay with Amelia. Because I forgot, but I wrote next to her in quotations, mom vibes. Mom vibes, <laughs> it's true. So I'm gonna stay with her. <laughs> Thanks! She, she's making sure that you're all taken care of. You didn't get uh literally mauled. That's true. Like Jay I'm the wrong did. person, but I have emotional mauling, I think. That's fair. So I'm gonna stay with her. From the events of the, you know, all, all reliving the uh, the death of your parents and uh, yeah. you're almost, yeah, I think that's fair. Jayquees, half bandaged and uh, still bloody, you run out to the back. It's an existential threat. <laughs> <laughs> and you run to, uh, you see that Kieran is uh, inspecting a lot of uh, the Pokemon that you all have have sent in. He says, "Oh, h- hello there, Jayquees. Uh, seems like y'all have been busy." Yes. Where is it? The thing. What? Are you talking about the big the big cats? These, no, these no, th- the thing. The awful thing. The eyes and the voice in your head. Do you have a box? Do you have like an unused wardrobe? I'll get a shuffle. Well, I, I I'm not sure what you're talking about with it with a with a thing, some sort of I know. <laughs> As he's saying this, you look just behind them and in the uh, the lineup of new Pokemon. You see uh, the big cats, the Persian, the Lipard, and then all of your other various catches, and at the end of the line, unmoving, unblinking, and staring at you. You see the wretched beast, the seal coon. I just point at it wordlessly. I'm stock still. It is me. You hear the dark whispers of seal coon in the back of your mind, a tingling at your ear. But Kieran says, oh, the, the seal coon, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? Kieran, shall I entrust you with this awful, awful burden? Well, I, well, I mean, it's... You must keep it here. Well, that's that's what I do anyway. I, I, I keep it here. Well, I mean, unless you wanna, unless you wanna no, take it out. No, 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 no. Just hold it. Carry the burden a while. Thank you for your service and hail and well met. And uh, yes, no. Leave me with the old man. I have to go. Continue to get bandaged, and I run back. <laughs> You run back to the infirmary. I mean, you just want to make all your decisions wrong. <laughs> Anytime you make a decision, I'm going to make it be what it wants. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, what would that be? <laughs> Jonah has given me much too much power. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you still can't actually, like, do anything. I mean, but you can. you're certainly making decisions. He's casting a spell on reality. That is ah, That's true. Just uh, enough. Just sprinkle it. I return to Cinnamon Mom. <laughs> Great, you're you're back to Amelia. Uh, you come back into the infirmary. Virgil hey, Jake, is just kind of chilling. You've got the the dinner plate that she prepared for you. Uh, she, Did she make a cookie? Yeah. She smells like cinnamon. No, definitely it's cookies for sure. I eat. I'm eating medieval some cookies, cookies and some milk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm and, adorable. And you have your you have your dinner as well. But I so give you, a little bit of cookie to Ellie <clears throat> because <clears throat> she's she's fire type, which means she's gonna smell like. Like a brick oven cinnamon, I guess. Ooh. I don't know. She's gonna be a cinnamon dog. It's like when you put vanilla extract in your oven, just cause. Yeah. Just cause. But you have your dinner. You have your your cookies, uh, and you finish <laughs> being bandaged. Your up. cookies, your you freaks, you children. I'm Jeez. I'm sitting and contemplating the wretched beast and how I might prevent its dangers. Its foul visage lingers in your mind. I'm okay with it because I'm breathing in and out and I know that I can confront and do something about the evils in the universe. Mm. That is definitely the vibe that you got after your whole uh, vision quest you went on. Yeah. So uh, after you are done being bandaged and everything, uh, is there anything else that you boys would like to do here in the fortress? Do you need to talk to anybody? I'm just kind of thinking about sleepy time and, you know, get up early for our, our trek. I was, I was, I was going to go talk to Gregor real fast. Oh, cool. You know, yeah, I had something I wanted to do as well. Uh, I'll just see you back at the dorm that I suppose we share. Do we have a place to sleep? Yeah, you, you guys have like a, you guys have a room. Yes. Oh wait, hold on. Where to go? Po- Poke yeah, God. God. No. No. Wrong. Poke po- po- God. God. <laughs> the ceiling gets ripped off. You see the face of Arceus appear in front of you. Yes. You have a bed. Isn't that a dog? Hmm? Arceus? I, I cut this out. I don't want to get ripped <laughs> apart. <laughs> I don't want my my entire yes. It's ruined. a dog. 
Uh, I think you, are you thinking of Arcanine? Definitely not. I don't think I'm thinking. I think we're thinking of Bacon Bird. Ah, uh, Bacon Bird. I think Bacon Bird shows oh. up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look into the future, look into the darkness. No, bacon, bacon Bird. <laughs> bacon Bird is is the the wretched beast's boss. But yeah, so uh, you're you're voice. going where? Could you remind me? Is Gregor uh, the artificer guy? The uh, Pokeball. Man. Yeah, Gregor is the Pokeball guy. Henrik is the terrible magic guy. Yeah. Kieran is the PC essentially. Yeah, you go have fun talking to Gregor. I, I got something I gotta figure out too. And then I walked to Gregor's you? spot because I forgot what Gregor's name was. <laughs> and I didn't realize <laughs> Virgil's going to the same place. Uh, oh, oh. It, it, yes, you. I also needed to speak to Greg, Gregor, Gregor. Cool. Yeah. Hey. Hey, you guys. Hi. Uh, how was uh? Oh, you look like uh, you've had a rough time, that, friend. That's what I'm here about, uh, Faust. I need a thing to put <laughs> in between myself and teeth that I can wear on my for, my on my physical form. Uh huh. Like is there like like armor like an armor yeah oh you're wanting uh, for it to be having armor yes it, I don't need to be fancy strap it to me well you know? I mean if you can put a C on it a C why yes, a C yes a C but your name does not start with C cool guys uh, copyright cool, copyright cool guys copyright yeah. yeah instead of copy incorrectly I see correct yeah, uh, well uh, if you're uh, looking for some sort of armor uh I, I could I could probably give it to you in the morning before you leave if you want a, a special C on it. Uh, I mean, I could give you just a regular set right now, but if you want C, I could I could get it to you later. That it, I mean, regular set sounds great. C great sounds later. Can I start a tab with you? Oh, I do what? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't can... have any money from beating up Pokemon in the woods. Right. Uh, well, yeah, you, you get your stipend after the missions and such. Oh. Uh, but uh, would you, uh, are you trying to say, uh, I mean, if you want something that's not super fancy, you know, I could give you like a light something like, uh, to start like a leather or something like that. Some sort of leather you, armor. And then if you wanted to perhaps upgrade later to some sort of, like studded you know, leather. More, more of medium or perhaps even a heavy armor, you know, then we could sort that out. But I can just, I've got some extra leathers in the, uh, in the bake. C for cool as hell. Thanks, man. I'm gonna go get some sleep then, and Jake, I'll some bad word. pick some it up in the morning. <laughs> yes, I, you can grab it in the morning for sure. Oh. For sure. Hey, have a great night. I'll see you at the spot. You want me to hang around outside and wait and walk with you? Oh, no, you, you go go get his catch his ease. Sleepy times, my friend. See ya. It's, it's catapult away. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight o'clock, so it's well past my bedtime. <laughs> hey. And I do. Nice, you do. You head back to the room. So you, Virgil, are left alone with Gregor. He says, hey, so uh, how was your night? Uh, it was g- good and bad. Yeah, um, I, I, same. You know, dinner was great, but I lost it. What? Mm-hmm. It was the game that we were playing after dinner. Oh, oh uh, yeah. It's a, good, it's a good game. It's true. I got blocked off, so I was not able to get the resources. It's, it's never good. It's never good when, like, the rolls. Like, it's all rolls. It's all, it's all the rolls is the thing. You know, it's like, you hey, the fate is up to a roll of the dice. Yeah, what is this about? I don't know. Next time, just play what you get. Don't be concerned about having, like, the longest road <laughs> or, like, the biggest army. Oh, but they just, do like just, the biggest army. Oh, I, I know. I, I mean, everybody does. But, like, play what you get, and you'll probably win. Yeah. I might try that next time, because, you know, this time, well, I see, I thought that I placed it, you know, where we had the tiles, and so I put it right in the middle of three, three resources, resources where I could get development uh, type of yeah. cards, where I can, you know, get more things from them, but the numbers were just no good, so never never rolled my numbers, even though I would theoretically sort of had the resources so that I could get... And, you know, Welcome I, to the Quest Company, where we talk <laughs> about another board game. Jake falls down a set of stairs, <laughs> and then continues to walk towards the door. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, enough about my night. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm just interested in how you make the Pokeballs. Oh, you want to learn how to make Pokeballs? Oh, yeah. So I uh, I used this great ball, and it broke. Mm. Um, and then I was looking at it, and I, I kind of understand how it works a little bit, but I'm not really sure, like, fundamentals of making them. And we found some uh, apricorns, and I was curious about, like, if I could work with you to make them. Oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, so at, at any time, if you bring the apricorns to me, uh, I can make them into Pokeballs and, you know, give them to you at, at nice discounts because you have brought me essentially half the resources I need. But if you want to learn, uh, I can also uh, work on teaching you. I will say, 
the the the, the magics, the enchantments required. Uh, maybe a little more complicated. It may take some time to uh, to hone in on those skills. Actually, uh, uh, Henrik and myself, uh, we we have. Um, well, through, throughout our time together, we have been able to figure out, uh, you know, some of these magics and things. You know, he he with the moves and I uh, with with some of the enchantments and the pokeballs. Uh, but uh, I can see if uh, I may be able to transfer some of this uh, arcane knowledge to you. So, so uh, yes, I can teach. Okay, okay. If I gave you the apricorns, could we, could like I, could I try and make one like now? Oh, you want to try now? I, yeah. Just to see what it's like. Sure, yes. Uh, let's see. What uh, what color of uh, apricorn you have here? Did you tell us what the colors were? Or is that part of the mystery? I think that I lightly mentioned it the first time where he was like, this one can do this and this can do this, like way back in episode like four. I'm going to pull out my one uh, blue apricorn and okay. be like, this guy. Okay, so this, so, uh, okay, so you would like to make a lure ball with this. Yeah, it helps uh, a Pokemon when you are uh, fishing and such. What would this one do? <laughs> Pull out the yellow one. Oh, uh, ooh, ooh, hey, look at that. They glows in the light a little bit. Uh, this is a moon ball. That one. Hey, uh, I yes. want to mess that one up. <laughs> I should probably mess up the lure ball. I want the, that one, the yellow one. Okay, so you want this to work together on the... Uh... Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, would you like for me to show you sort of process on one first before you start hammering away on this guy? Can we just work together? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sure. Here, let me, I will show you simple. I'm a quick learner. Simple, no extras, Pokeball. And while I work on other ball, because uh, most of components are the same, is if uh, little pieces and stuff go. So you can work okay. on your, uh, this will be Moon Ball while I work on regular Pokeball. So we can side by side. And I will probably have to do the tail end with the, with the enchantments and such. But the mechanical side, we can do tonight. Okay. Great. And so he hands you back the moon ball. He says, come, come to, come to the office. And you see the uh, amber palm and the Nuzleaf are just sort of chilling there and observing as you, uh, as you work on this, uh, this tree like uh, Pokemon that's bipedal uh, that you remember is uh, an evolved form of the C dot that Jake Weiss caught earlier. And then just this, this monkey with two tails is just chilling. I was just laughing, thinking to myself about how much of a dumb D&D move it would be if I popped my head back in. Also, I want mine done, please. <laughs> how funny that would be. <laughs> how ludicrously meta. I don't. In fact, I try to walk back to the dorm and probably have difficulty. Because of your grievous injuries. And because I don't think I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't go. We were never taken to the dorms. I have been here for a while, though, like convalescing, so I probably would know vaguely. Yeah, vaguely. You're like w- kind of wandering through the halls and you run into Henrik. He says, are you lost? I make a, a go, sign. To go w- find mom. To ward against evil. Nah, hey, no, nah, it's okay. How are you? Wow. Doing well, well. Uh, I, I just had a realization. What? You're just people. Yeah, we, we, are, we are just people. Wow. We are, oh, hey, have oh, a good night, man. Oh, danke. And I like off like to shake his hand, he, he but sh- I, I shake your hand. back to, and I like wait, but no, and then like oh, hand shoulder pat, you know. You have met my servant. I block that. I'm out. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then I continue to go. I'm completely kidding. Whether or not I know where I'm going. <laughs> Because it's the journey, not the destination. Yeah, there, there's not a ton of, like, halls and offshoots and overly complicated things to maneuver around. You're able to find where, like, the, the barracks and stuff are. Nice. Yeah, easily enough. And you see that there are uh, sort of some other you know, rooms in that same hallway that seem to be about the same size and mm. have some other, like, trunks and things. Uh, but you find the room where your well, I guess you didn't really have a trunk. No, it's just my, my, my greasy bag. Yeah, you see a trunk that's like got uh, Virgil's name labeled on it at the foot of one of the beds. Well, that's not for me. But there are two <laughs> beds <laughs> in the room. Well, that's not my name. <laughs> I sleep on the floor. <laughs> no, I'm going to instantly just boom, shirt off, bandages still on, hopefully, down on the ground. Shirt off, bandages rip open all the, <laughs> the new forming scabs. And Continuing I, to bleed. I think I I, I, I I try to reach out and pet Chevy, but he just sort of wanders where the trunk would be, like ignoring like my touch and mm. like licks his wounds and lays down to sleep. So uh, I'm going to bond with Arnie, I think. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So uh, as you are doing that, uh, I think that at one point after Chev kind of like recoils away from you and you, you're playing with Arnie a little bit, uh, this Azuril with its vestigial arms. I, I Well, you probably 
we'll say that on the way you went back and grabbed him from Kira. Or wait, no, you had him. him. You had him. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, You didn't have to go back and confront the wretched beast. Never. Uh, (laughs) I will never return. (laughs) Until it is, I can either destroy it or seal it away. (laughs) Of course, of course. Is that why you're looking for a trunk? (laughs) If I can just find a trunk <laughs> and ensorcel it in the same way the nut is ensorceled. <laughs> Seal it away forever. Um. <laughs> oh, wait, a question. Yes. So are the Pokemon just out and about? Like in the back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm scared of those cats. When you went out there earlier uh, and spoke with Kieran, the cats actually seemed pretty chill. It seems as though just from what you can tell, there's there's something about the process of you know capturing them in these pokeballs uh, that seems to calm them down and perhaps subdue some sort of wild and violent nature that there may be. Huh. And also, you probably can gather that Kieran is a much higher level sort of uh, sure trainer he character. Can, he can inspire some sort of like loyalty or confidence from the pokemans he interacts with. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. He's able to to wield their dark powers. As you're doing that, you're bonding with... What, what are you doing bonding with Arnie? Uh, I think we're doing some light push-ups. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just a little, you know, like pre-bed you know, bed sort of... Feels great on that gaping wound that you have. And then I think he doesn't have a word for it, but he sits on his bed with his back straight and just kind of breathes for a little bit. And I think Arnie chills too. Yeah. As you're sitting there breathing, uh, you can see out the window uh, toward the courtyard and everything, and on the sort of, uh, you know, staked wooden fence that makes up the perimeter. In the moonlight, walking along the top, a black semi-vulpine feline canine sort of Pokemon just walking across. And it looks in your room as you say, whoa, it just looks at you for a moment, and then continues walking along. Dang. Chevy, you see that? Evie. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's very soon out of sight once again, as it's uh, just not not a huge window, but just so wow. dark, mysterious, <laughs> powerful. I should really come up with a name for this process. It's like I'm trying to like something about my mental like state. I'm I'm men- mental stating. I'm mental stating. This is my mental station. I'm mental stating right now. And you I mental have, state in your room. I have a good mental station. While down below in the smithy, uh, you are working with Gregor on these Pokeballs. Go ahead and give me a tinkering check with advantage because Gregor's helping you. Okay. I like stinkering check. (laughs) So I think that what it's going to be for Pokeballs, and uh, if we're going to delve more into you learning these things and how all this works and everything, I think that what it is, it is going to be you uh, putting together the components and doing all of that proficiency in decks. For okay. that uh, tinkering. And then if and when you get to the point where you can actually enchant them to be these fully uh, ensorcelled uh, Pokeballs that have the ability to capture and everything, yeah. taking that next step, I think that that will probably be like a, a spell casting sort of intelligence check. So it'll be like a two-tiered sort of thing. Cool. Love it. To, uh, make so this first thing is going to be dex. Is dex plus proficiency. Yes. Because I have proficiency in tinkering tools. Took it with your feet. Okay, so that is what I roll plus six, which is a 21. With a 21, you are able to very dexterously, with your little little hands, follow along with what Gregor is doing as he's showing little you. hands. With his very <laughs> large hands. And again, as you're working with Gregor, and like there are some times where you're trying to uh, struggle a little bit with just, you know, all of these tiny, tiny components. This dude in his massive hands has no issue with all of these tiny parts. Mm-hmm. But so you follow along and he says, oh, he's very good, very good. I see you've got the little component there and the button. Uh, and you go along and, and you follow along perfectly uh, as per his instruction. And you are able to put together the mechanical components of the Pokeball. And he says, oh, this is this is very good. This is very, very good. This is excellent work that you have done here. Uh, and so now uh, I can afford to be showing you uh, this enchantment. Uh, and so he goes and he takes um, his, like, carver's tools, and you see that he takes them and he, like, carves these little runes into the Pokeballs. Uh, he, he puts one into the standard Pokeball uh, that seems... You, you, you've seen this rune because it's on the other ones that you've done yeah. before. You see that, that as he carves it, these runes glow for a moment, and then uh, the little sort of button glows red for a moment before it becomes still. He says, all right, so that one is done. And then 
over here and describe the rune that he carves for the moon ball. I don't know. Whatever's whatever's basic for the moon. Just some just some curvy, curvy rune. It's a sort of crescent moon shape there in the middle. He carves it and the rune glows a bit and then the button glows for a moment. And he says, and uh, that is it. Uh, you hear him like murmuring some some words that you can't quite understand and, you know, making little little hand gestures and everything because he seems to be enchanting it uh, both times. But then they're complete. Here, uh, no charge for this one. I like that you are wanting to learn. You're very good. Thanks. Cool. Moon ball. You have a moon ball. I'm trying to make money irrelevant. Oh. <laughs> now you're speaking Joe's language. <laughs> <laughs> we won't need money. That's it. the world from capitalization. Bad stuff. <laughs> Team Catapult. To unite all people by within... socialization. <laughs> With socialization. <laughs> Guys, we're leaning into villagers. We're leaning into villagers. I don't know. It's pretty utopian. <laughs> I think villagers is distinctly dystopian. <laughs> villagers is the bad place. It's valid. I mean, <laughs> Pearl's reality is really good when you think about it. It has to be our doing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's solve all the world problems. <gasps> Team Catapult, baby. Propelling forward at the speed of stone. <laughs> Propelling forward at the speed of terminal velocity. <laughs> is there anything else that you want from Gregor? Uh, in, all I have is $150. Gotcha. Poke. If you've only got 150 yeah. there are no uh, Pokeballs that you could buy right now. Gotcha. Uh, what do the standard Pokeballs cost? The standard Pokeballs are 250 250 Cool, cool, cool. He says, if you want to buy this, well, I'll, I'll give it to you for like just a hundred, just to cover the component cost because you were learning. It, it's okay. I'm gonna go talk to Henrik real fast, and then I'm gonna go to bed. Okay. I, I mean, we can we can fast fast track this if you want. I basically because I only have a hundred fifty dollars. Uh huh. Okay. I don't know if there's any terrible magics that I could teach. Chud. Destroy gotcha. your world. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but. <laughs> But that is what Andrew is interested, and I think Virgil is just like, or even something that he could teach new Beldum. So I, I will go ahead and tell you that if you go and find Henrik uh, for 150 pokey, there are not any terrible magics, uh, any TMs that could be learned. Cool beans. I would I would have known that with my memory. Yes. <laughs> and I would not have even bothered because he scares me, and I'm alone. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. I'll go see if I can swipe a little bit of extra meat from, like, leftovers to bring back to the room. Oh, yeah, I think that you could just ask Amelia, and she says, oh, okay, yeah, sure. You had mentioned wanting to speak with Pandora. Did you want to just wait and do that more tomorrow? I think Both more tomorrow because I want Joe there. You've got a long ride. He's really tired. It's late. It's like 9 o'clock, so I probably need to go to bed. <laughs> it's like 9.30. I'm, I'm 12. Guys, I know we're having fun and all. To 26-year-old Joseph, that seems late right now. <laughs> <laughs> you coward. <laughs> it's the pandemic. You're supposed to be sleep- going to bed at like, like 2 in the morning. God, I don't know what Every it is. day. But oh, I don't. Oh, uh, that's really good for you. I'm glad. You're really healthy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to then, I guess, go, go to our room. Is it just us in there or is it like a bunkhouse? It's just you two in that particular room. Yes. You see uh, that there are other rooms room. in the hallway. Oh, yeah, Joe, but, we have a dorm room. I'm it, so excited. It is your dorm. Awesome. We got like a Goodfellas poster. <laughs> we got like a Scarface poster. <laughs> got a Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. None of them are mine. You got an N64. John Belushi the N64 with The N64 is mine. The N64 is definitely yeah. in the dorm room. We have like room. an open door policy, but nobody wants to hang out with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to give a little extra food bites to any of the Pokemon that I have that, that want them and if Eevee tries to take some I'm not going to stop I'm not going to stop Chev Chev <laughs> does take okay. Chev does take yeah I figured <laughs> I don't know that I'm ready to try and be an alpha yet in this moment I feel like I feel like I might be like this tiny fox I, well, I feel like Chev is like alpha right now not Chev Jayquees is like what? alpha over Chev right like you have control oh, right to some extent, of Chev, right? But I don't know that I have, as a 12-year-old, the ability to impose 
any form of yeah. discipline law or law sure. on that monster. Right. Yeah. It, on Geralt. <laughs> And I, I will say, the, you were not until, like, today. Right. Uh, you know, this this begrudging respect has grown. So at this point, you're like... I'm glad. You're barely hanging on to that sort of control. But that's moment. okay. I, I think I got enough too. that it doesn't it doesn't matter. But but any of my Pokemans I got with me, I want to give them a little extra meats. Yeah. We can say that this is your time that you're spending, you know, with them, getting ready for whatever's coming tomorrow. Right. You know, uh, get, getting the team all cohesive. Which I have to show you... Yeah. At some point today, the slow poke I caught in <laughs> Let's Go. Yeah. Because I farmed like so over a hundred to get like the, the best stats I could. Oh, and yeah. then I just force fed it health candies <laughs> so that it's like has. It's it, like it, 10 oh. levels behind his other party like, members who are also evolved. This poor well, thick evolved, boy. But it's like got more hit points than anything. It's like it's, it's just a, a wall of meat. <laughs> That doesn't recognize pain. Take a big hit. Oh, God. He's basically a rubber boy. So who would you like to have? Oh, man, this is tough. I will say, since Joe's looking, Virgil's party is for sure going to consist of Ellie, uh-huh. Juniper the Bulbasaur, his new uh, Beldum, and Chud the Destroyer for <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to be a little underpowered here. I'm going to go with Tigre. Okay. Chevy. Uh, Arno and uh, Elaine, my hoot hoot. So that's the EV, the Abra, the uh, Azumarill. Is that it? Uh, Azumarill and uh, the hoot hoot. Nice, solid squads. We got a decent coverage. Okay, good, we good do. party composition. Well, so with that, with with the friends that you have currently, you all, I think, had mentioned maybe it was off mic, uh, wanting to try and to do loyalty roles for ones that you've been spending time with today. If you if you have a particular one that you're like I want to work with this one, mm-hmm. you know I will I will tell you what all sort of modifiers you have to add to or that would take away from that, and then we'll kind of go from there. We'll do you first, then mm-hmm. Joe. Which one are you uh, bonding with during the long rest? It was oh, it was uh, Azuril. Yes. Okay. Arnie. Okay, so you can try with Azuril because you're bonding with uh-huh. it if you want to. Yeah. Chef cast helping hand. Did you fight with We're Azuril? All friends with Arnie. Yeah, he got uh, absolutely marked. So you're bonding with him, but he fought and fainted. So you'll get a plus three to the roll. Cool. Ba, ba, ba. That's a 15. A 15, and he's at zero right now. He will go from zero to one. Ba, ba, ba. Nice. We're such good pokey masters. Chevy next? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for got Chevy, murked. got murked. Uh, so that's one minus one. Uh, but then... All day he was hanging. Yeah, he was hanging all day, so he was the most time outside the ball, and he... Fought and won a couple times. Fought and won a few times, so I think that you had the three wild ones, uh, so essentially you'll get you'll get plus three because of the one, and then the other two, and then minus the one. 21. Woohoo! 21, yeah. and he He's was... He's a level two. Lo- loyalty two. DC to go from two to three is 20. Jeff's my boy. Nice. He grudgingly respects me even more. Mm, this is what it is. Evie. As in your brain, you hear a faint residual. This is what it is. It is. It totally you're, is. You're no longer Dandelion. You're Yennefer. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I'm not Can I be Roach? <laughs> you're just Roach. Oh, no. <laughs> you're just the horse. Roach. All right, and then Tigre. I'll just tell you straight up, I'll give Tigre a plus five. You, like, mind-linked with Tigre. 20. Let's 20. go, Joe. Was T grade zero? Zero. Oh, so he goes up to one. You can only do one right. at a time unless you like crit. Mm, interesting. Oh, shoot. Mind Lincoln. You're just getting in there with your boys. We're just talking about our feelings. <laughs> I love the, the, the composition that has been painted here of you meditating, mind linking, <laughs> excuse me, mind stating, mental, mental stating, stating. <laughs> mental stating with your, 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 your friends. <laughs> And me, a 12-year-old boy, just, like, handing out food and, like, petting them. It's like a little cuddle party over yeah. here, and then it's, like, push-ups I, and meditation. There's push-ups and meditation and a cuddle puddle. Push-ups and meditation is my, uh, my mantra. I was thinking, actually, that you were unlocking, like, the secrets of the cosmos by way of nut. And then... <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Yes, and <laughs> we're working there. We're both working towards the same cosmic epiphany. It's just I'm pushing up and mental stating, yeah. and you're doing math. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing math, which makes me Andrew sad. <laughs> Magic so, math? No, it's awesome. So, who do you want to do first, Andrew? So we'll start with Ellie. 
Okay, start with Ellie. Ellie is what loyalty right now? She is loyalty two. Loyalty two. Are you? Which one are you bonding with? You bonding with her or somebody else? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna bond with Judd. <laughs> that, that sounds right. I need him to have more hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie didn't faint, correct? Nope. I didn't have anyone faint. No, she, yeah. And then I just she, called her back to put in Chud to put it to sleep. If you want her to be, uh, if she was the one that spent the most time outside of her ball. I do think she was. Great. So she'll have plus two. Cool beans. That is a flat 20. Flat 20. 18 plus two. So if she got 20, then she will go to three. <sighs> Let's go. My good, sweet girl. Who next? Juniper the Bulbasaur. So she will get plus three for the water battles. Uh, that is a 19. 19? What was she at? Zero. She goes from zero to one. Whoop, whoop. And my boy, Chud, who I'm bonding with. Chud. Dude, I'm going to give him two for being clutch. I'll give him two for being clutch. For being more than a sacrificial lamb, which is clutch. what I thought he Chud. was going to be. Right. Going in with two hit points and not dying. I'll give him an extra one for that. And then since you're bonding, plus four. So uh, plus six for Chud. That's a 21 for Chud. He will go to one. Rock on. Chud now has 47 hit points. Dear God. Jayquees, as you're like sort of just like doing a loose mind link, you, you just kind of listen over all the Pokemon in the room and your brain drifts over to Chud and it's just static. <laughs> Honestly, King. <laughs> it's it's how like, I'm trying to be. You're like, that, that's the mental stating that you're <laughs> just, aspiring that's to. That's literally Shut what is I'm just looking for. the Patrick meme. <laughs> the confines of my mind <laughs> are an enigma. enigma. The second the time milk. we've done that, and the second I have heard that exact phrase from editing it so many times. <laughs> and with that, we will rest the boys. Boop, boop, boop. And ladies. And ladies. Thank you. Hello friends, Jonah here to say thank you for listening to this episode of Kinoko Origins. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our fabulous partner, Dice Envy. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so why not get a little special something for that special someone? And by special something, I mean the new Valentine's Day edition of Dice Envy's Infinity Dice, because nothing says I love you like a smooth D4. If you're looking to add to that, I couldn't even... <laughs> If you're looking to add to your dice hoard, you can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to diceenvy.com slash questco or by using promo code questco at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of the Quest Company, please do us a favor and go over to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us. We read every review that comes in and getting more of those is a big boost to our visibility. And if you really love what we do here at the Quest Company and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash questcompanypodcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanypodcast.com. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at The Quest Company. You can also come hang out with us in our Discord. If you need links to any of those things, go check out our website. It's all there. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that's especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us using hashtag the quest company or hashtag Kanoko origins. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Tagging us really is the best way to make sure we see the stuff you're posting and the best way to guide folks directly to us. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more incredible art since the mid-season finale went up. Thank you to Peach at Peach Doodles on Twitter for sending in art of Chev in the tub, full Witcher style, along with a beautiful piece featuring the mysterious Umbreon. 
Also, big shout out to Peach and Gigi and MB and everybody else in the Discord who posted art and stories about their Kanoka Origins OCs. We loved seeing and hearing about all of those. And if you haven't seen those things, go check them out on our Instagram and Twitter or in the fan art gallery on the website. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the wonderful artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Braxton Burks and Materia Collective for the songs The Adventure Begins, Arceus and the Creation, Azalea Town, and The Road to Fall Arbor Town. Thank you to Daniel Rand and Materia Collective for the songs Moon and Scars, Arcana Magica, and Last of the Guard. Thank you to Dark Fantasy Studio for the songs Ashes, Dark Echoes, Out of Body, and Distant Fear. Thanks to Celestial Eon Project for the song Rainy Day. Thank you to Michael and Game Chops for Ecrutic City and Azalea. Town. Thanks to Coyote Hearing for the song Funhouse, and thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's get back to it and see how else the boys can delay going and actually doing their next mission. <laughs> thank you for joining us here at the Quest Company. So you all rest for the night after your big day that was somehow like a bigger day than the actual mission where you went and caught the buffer free. Yeah, the that smoothest was the, part. The that, compa- that was comparatively nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> that was child's play. So this was like your big, I don't know, four hours. We talked to our inner brain. <laughs> and <laughs> survived <laughs> Big Cat Rescue Carol Baskin. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we have seen some things. I'm never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> that's You're me, Carol. That's me, after buying, <laughs> that's me after buying every Pokeball. True. I am never going to financially <laughs> recover from this. I'm never going to financially recover. Actually, excuse me, Gregor, the second I left his office. What am I talking about? Oh, my God. No, I'm not Joe Exotic. I'm Doc. You are Doc. Oh, Ansel you're Doc right Ansel. now. Oh, no. I don't He's like that. He's the worst one. He's no, absolute by far. He's a nightmare. It's not even close. Oh, God. So you rest during the night. Jake Weiss. Uh oh. <sighs> No, I don't know. (laughs) It's not that. It's not that it's a beast. I don't want it to be. (laughs) During the night, I think that uh, at one point you feel a sort of strange uh, sensation in your sleep, and you wake with a start. Around you, you do not see the room as you know it. You just see a sort of minty green, just sort of expanse. Whoa. Where you are, you look down at your bed, and you see yourself and your bed and th- the floor are sort of this, uh, coated in a uh, sort of lavender tint. Okay. Whew. Thought you were going to say slime. I was like, <laughs> did not expect Lovecraft this quick. <laughs> wow. So, there's just a muck. Hello? It echoes. Get out of here, wretched beast. <laughs> um, I have to stop. I am going to mental state as I take in the, my, my surroundings. I'm just going to observe everything I can without seeking really to alter it or myself. Mm. You do this for a moment and uh, as you uh, take a second to mental state, more of your surroundings, you see them sort of build around you. The The floor sort of spreads out a little bit and you actually see more of the area around you. The, the room constructs itself as you mental state. Mm. Uh, you are still floating in this expanse, but you do see uh, just across the quote, the room from you. Virgil in bed with all of his cuddle puddle, and you can see that next to you. Is everybody out of their Pokeballs yeah. and everything? Yeah. If we're being real, they're all just kind of chilling on floor space and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. you you notice all of them. I'm going to look out where the window would be. You look out where the window would be. The window forms right. as you look in that direction. Um, and you can see like just sort of like floating pieces of like the the playground equipment essentially in the backyard. Oh, you know I'm popping over towards the window and like I'm going to lean up against it and look through it. Okay, you float over there. Whoa. 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 
and I, I like press myself up against the window. Is it like a physical thing, or is it like a like an outline kind of deal? Like, what is it? It feels physical to you oh. as you float over to it. Whoa! All right, I'm in the fighting. Uh, like, Dragon yeah, yeah. Ball it's Z. how many how many coyotes can you take yeah. in, a, in a fight? I don't want to fight anything, How especially not with claws. Um, <laughs> I don't want to fight. You hear Virgil stirring asleep a little bit. Oh my God! I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna um, rove around this this zone, trying to like go outside or anything like that. Or so like, the window's cl- closed. Can I like open it? You just think about it. Your hand passes through the glass. <laughs> I'm gonna float through the glass. You do. Zoons, I'm in the dang playground, which means the wretched beast is here. If I can trap it in this realm, I'm going to zoom over towards the playground and observe the sleeping Pokemans. You zoom over to observe the sleeping Pokemans, uh, and you see once again uh, the area forms around... But uh, you, you notice once more, uh, most of them are asleep around the place. The the two big cats are cuddled up next to each other, and the others are in various you know places. Things that would make sense, the sort of uh, artificial terrain that has been constructed for them. As you're floating over, you see on the sort of just like floating fence post, hopping from one to one, that same black creature just turns and looks at you. Hey, you can see me? It just keeps on looking at you. Have a nice evening, ma'am. <laughs> I think he is going to test this and try to float as quickly as possible in a straight line away from the keeper base. Like, just fully away from it as far as you can? How far does this thing go, baby? He's 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 mind flying. So, you know how in a dream sometimes, like, you can fly, but Uh then, like, halfway through, you kind of lose it? I'm, like building up like dream you're speed like building up and you're like going and you get to like a little bit into the forest and then you just feel like you're not getting anywhere after that like you still feel like the momentum you feel like you're going but none of the surroundings are changing and stuff seem, still seems very far off from you well dang you can see uh, in the area around just again it's like as you focus on certain things knowing this terrain now you, you say, you know, as, as soon as you focus on something, it sort of constructs itself in front of you. You know, a tree grows if you look in the direction where you know where a tree is, whatever it may be. You look up toward Henrik's tower, and it builds itself in front of you. Huh. I don't know what to do. I think I sneeze with, with the enormity of it all. What the heck? I just don't. I'm, I'm like a confused animal. I think I'm on, like, the main path into the base. Okay, like, so outside of the front door? Yeah. You sneeze? Uh Uh-huh. Everything goes black. Morning comes. Uh, (laughs) Virgil. How am I playing the wizard this time and the weird stuff doesn't happen to me? Every time. I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, but I'm kidding. It doesn't bother me. Uh, How was your sleep? How was it? Well, (laughs) let's be honest. Tell me about it. Hold up. I'd say you probably dreamed of uh, those enchantments. I'd say the Pokeballs were probably on the brain to some extent. Probably, yeah. Uh, seeing um, magics performed before you. I'm going to pull something from my own real life. Mm-hmm. I think his feet were probably really warm because Ellie was on top of them just kind of warming them. Yeah, at like the foot of the bed. Kinda. Yeah. I, I, I think Juniper probably like slept up on the bed but probably had a, like a, her own little space, mm-hmm. right? The Bulbasaur, I don't know. Yeah. Feels right. Um, that cool succulent bulb just chilling. I feel like Beldum, I'm not even sure. I don't know that Pokemon very well. It just waits. <laughs> like, like I feel like it kind of just hovered around the room. I don't know that it needs sleep. It just kind of floated there. In retrospect, Jake Weiss, looking at all of them, you notice that the Beldum seemed to just be floating there, and the eye sort of lazily followed you a little bit. But it was so, it was so like not intense, and especially because it's just sort of a metal orb, it wasn't staring directly at yeah, you. Yeah, I have no fear of the good, sweet, ba- big, bad Beetle Borg. It is, it is the wretched beast that I despise. Yes, but I think <laughs> I think he probably woke up uh, moist because I'm assuming that uh, much like. My own lovable pup, Tubby. Uh, I assume that at some point in the night, Chud migrated. I assume I put Chud in the bed, and he just stayed standing and, like, staring at the wall. Correct. And, like, not really, like, registering. And then whenever he hit, like, it's time for Chud to sleep About now, an hour later when he realized it was yeah, bedtime. Like, uh, yeah. I, we were we were already c- cuddled and asleep, so I think he came up on top of the pillows and, like, 
laid partly on my head uh-huh. and on the pillow. So I, I assume Chud's just a moist boy. He's a weird little hippo lizard. <laughs> All the time. But yeah, I think Chud tries to cuddle up because we bonded. And I don't know what bonded looks like for him. <laughs> but I think Virgil sat down for probably an hour and tried to figure out what his whole steez was. It was just like some really solid eye contact as he was just breathing through his mouth. Him. You fed him. So I feel like that's a that's lot of That's really points. where it was. That's really where it was. Uh, and he chewed on that for like a good, good 20 minutes. I think he probably also chewed on my pillow. But so you wake up in the morning. Uh, uh, did you? What did you dream of? You know, sometimes you just don't remember dreaming anything. Yeah. I think it's that. Like, I think he went to bed and woke up and it's like, it's like it's time to go. Yep. He T-posed in his dream until the time to be played again. <laughs> you just, as you wake up, it's like the faintest remembrance of that whale song. Yeah, before. yeah, love it. You wake up and Jayquees is in in the room. <laughs> getting a, getting an early start. All his Pokemon are still there, chilling. Getting an early start without his friends. Maybe he's, maybe he's walking. I feel like he would take Chev. Hey, hey, uh, I gently approach Chev like a hippogriffin in Harry Potter. You approach the slumbering beast who is beginning to stir. I make eye contact and bow. Hmm. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, hey, Chev, um, Evie. sir, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't see Jayquees anywhere, and I feel like he would have taken you with him if you went. Maybe you went to pee. Chev looks to his left and his right. <clears throat> he like stands up and does that little like shake thing where he's he gets like all puffed up for a second before the all the fur kind of comes back to normal. That, that was great. Evie. Very elegant. He hops down from the bed and very muscularly walks toward the door. I toss a coin to him. He catches it in his mouth. Buries it away in his little neck neck fluff. With all the things he's mugged from people. <laughs> yes, with all the... Credit that's, cards. That's where he puts all the stuff that he mugs is just right. in the neck fluff. Chev has been appeased. What do you want to do? Maybe we should all go go look for him. Evie. Maybe just you, Chev, and, and we can leave your friends here and I'll just... I put everybody back in their, their balls. You put everybody back in their Pokeballs. Um, that are mine to do that way. I'm not going to presume. Right. As uh, Elaine and Arnie are still sleeping, uh, I think that as you are talking to Chev and everything, Tigray just sort of, still with eyes closed and everything, but just sort of starts floating up from the bed and just begins following loosely after you. Okay, that's happening now. Can I let Chud out of his Pokeball to walk with me? Sure. As you all start moving down the hallway, Tigray very, like, way more gently than you've ever seen before. Uh, just sort of backpacks himself on you. Okay. Jayquee's made a lot of trouble about this. You don't squeeze at all. Yeah, bro. Nice little guy. And I'm going to go with my cavalcade of Pokemon, like a freaking Totoro <laughs> walk with all the <laughs> woodland creatures. And, and go try and, I guess, investigate and try and find Jayquees. Cool. Where are you going to look? It's early morning. Uh, I think that you know The bathrooms. The bathrooms? You, you check the bathrooms and I he is I do not take there. big poops. You're right. <laughs> nope, not cutting that. Why would that be cut? I know that Jayquees takes big poops, so <laughs> I check the bathroom. It's not in the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it, it is very early watch. because you... Uh, <laughs> he just talks about them a lot. <laughs> uh, because you were, you know, I think that with, especially with your keen mind and everything, you're like, it's an early day tomorrow, so I got to get up super early. Yeah. It's like pretty much sunrise I always know still. what time it is. Exactly. Your you're internal you're correct. I know is, what time it is exactly. And which way is north? It's 6.43 and 57 seconds. 6.44. Um, maybe I'll go... Ugh. Go check the the Pokemon yard. Is there like a training yard for humans? Yeah, it's all kind of one big thing. Like there's okay. m- mostly the playground equipment stuff, <laughs> and then and then there's also <laughs> no. you see that Gregor is just just lifting. Yeah, this prison home. yard like, and Arrested Development. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's just, well, that was my question. I didn't. Well, know actually, Gregor like, is spotting while Buffer but, Free is lifting. <laughs> absolutely, a gym. I didn't know if there was a gym. Anywho, yeah, I'll go out there and look. Place where you have heavy stones that you lift to sculpt and tone. I've never been in one. I you think do not I would die. See Jake Weiss. You do see the wretched beast just sort of in the exact same spot where it was. I mean, you wouldn't know that it was the same spot, I suppose. Hi. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find out. <laughs> I don't know that it's evil. Not correct. <laughs> yeah, it's, it just like looks no. like it just looks like a cocoon. Oh, cool. 
Uh, with your with your like passive perception, you notice that there's like a little bit more of like cocoon webby stuff around it. Bugs are neat. <laughs> he wouldn't be in the wizard tower. That's not his style. Are other people up? Gregor is out there in the yard lifting with buffer free. I think Kieran's out there too, uh, just doing some exercises and a little bit of like grooming and everything with some of the other ones that you caught from yesterday. Maybe he's like brushing brushing the cats. Uh, have you morning. guys seen Jayquees? No, I have, uh, have not seen him this morning. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe he went for a run. Uh, he runs a lot, right? He's messenger. Maybe he went to take a lap. Figured he was going to poop because he talks about his poop a lot. You know, he did do that, actually. I do I do remember. <laughs> False. <laughs> <laughs> do not take this liberty. <laughs> uh, where would be a good spot to run? I guess he could run through the halls or he could have just gone out in the woods or something. I don't know. Why do, why do you have his... Uh, did he take another Pokemon besides the Eevee? He usually walked... Well, all of that guy, no, the one that they, they busted Ebra. Yeah, all of his Pokemon, he left them in the room. So, I'm, I thought he... That's, I, that's why I thought he had to poop. Oh, yeah. Because I, I don't take my Pokemon to poop. Right. Hmm. But, yeah, it's weird. Uh, well... I wouldn't think he was going to run out in the woods because, you know, he could uh, get be, eaten. Yeah, that would be dangerous. He's almost been eaten, what, twice now? This guy, oof. Well, if y'all haven't seen him, I guess I'll go, like, look out, look outside. All right, well, uh, hope, you, hope you're fine. Do you need help? He, like, puts the weight, he puts the barbell back on the thing and the buffer freeze, like, Pree! wipes a little bit of sweat. That's terrifying, <laughs> um, and I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all go away. You, um, you walk through the great hall and you see that there's, you know, some of the others are having breakfast. Uh, Pandora actually sees you. She says, "Are you uh, ready to go here in just a little bit? Where's, where's Jayquees? I can't, I can't find him. And he left all of his Pokemon in the room. And did you know that Gregor lifts weights with the Pokemon? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, they all want to be big and strong, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. Did you know the Butterfree sure. is lifting weights? The Butterfree is getting stronger. Do we need that? Well, I mean, that's that's just what training is. I mean, if that's what the Butterfree wants, if the Butterfree wants to be stronger, why shouldn't it? Maybe we shouldn't give the Butterfree what it wants. Why not? Because it was terrorizing people, right? Well, it's it's your friend now, is it not? I already have a terrifying bug subplot. We don't need a second one. That's called narrative bloat. <laughs> well, welcome to narrative <laughs> bloat. Because I'm afraid of that Butterfree. Um, okay, well, I'm just, I'm looking for Jayquees, but... I'm here on time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go check out the outside. I acknowledge that you're here on time. I appreciate your punctuality as you walk you. away. You walk out with the front I door. I think I still have 23 minutes. <laughs> you do. Okay. Or something like that. I don't know. Well, it's I mean, not exact. What is the best? Out it is. Time is exact. And then <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk out whichever is... Whichever would be the clearest way to outside. Great. So you walk out like the big sort of front door. Uh, you okay. lift up the big uh, like oh the the thing the thing that you lift the crossbar the, the crossbar. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I get all my Pokemon to help me. Yeah, it's Juniper like with the vines pushes. It I up am and, not. It's pretty much just Juniper because she's the one who can reach with the vines. Well, but she does it. But Chud can think about it. Chud thinks real hard about it. But so you, you open the, the crossbar, um, which was which was like in place. It didn't seem like it had been like opened yet for the day or anything. You walk outside onto the, the front road, the, the path that leads into the fortress. You see Jayquees asleep on the ground. Naked from the waist up. He looks exactly as you left him last night. He's sprawled out just like if he was in bed. <sighs> Time is exact. Oh my god, I think he's dead. What? And Who's I dead? run over. What what? Who's dead? Uh you? You're no. outside. Oh, wow. That would make a lot of sense, actually. What? What if we're all dead and this is heaven? If it's heaven to be good with other people and to be nice to other people and to have them love you in return, then maybe we are dead and this is heaven. What if it's just a game where we're controlled by the whims of madmen? Oh, my God. What if it's Katan? Yeah. Wow. I had a really good night's sleep. Why are we outside? What? You, you, were, I, you were asleep out here and you left all your Pokemon inside. So it wasn't. I thought you were pooping because, you know, you always talk about your poop. I, I do take big poops, but that's not. Why? Why did you bring that up? <laughs> because, you know, I'm that's the first place I checked and you talk about it. About and you weren't big there. <laughs> it's because your colon is healthy. As, as you're having this conversation, Chev saunters up to you and looks you up and down and says, Evie. 
and T Gray migrates, floats off. Of- Hi, T Gray. Chev was wor- worried, heroically worried. He was heroically worried. That sounds mm. like him. He does care about me deep down. Mm. I sometimes think that the most cynical people among us actually have like a really deep, caring core at their center. And that includes Chev. Yeah, because then what else would there, what, what there to be cynical about? Yeah, why you would they be care? sad? Obviously, they cared in the first place. I'm glad we agree. Mm-hmm. Evie. Oh, crap. I left all my Pokemon, and I disappear. Yeah. And I'm back in the room. Yep. <laughs> ah! Yeah, so that happened. I, I'm just outside. He's You're just gone. outside. And I gather my Pokemans and walk into the main hall. Uh, I will say... T. Gray went with you. Chev did not. Chev did not. Yeah. Can I make an Arcana check? You can certainly try. Uh, also, I realized I never ma- named the butter- buffer free, so it's Luferigno. Anyway, <laughs> Luferigno the buffer free. Twenty five. Arcana. Twenty five. Looked a lot like a teleport, like the Pokemon move teleport. He just zoom blinked right out. Additionally, let's that see. That doesn't here. make sense. Jake Weiss, yes. you take. Oofa doofa. Eight psychic damage. Ow. And you expend one hit die. Ow. Uh, I start looking around. Uh Uh-huh. Outside. Can I make an investigation check outside to see if I can find him? Yeah. And if there's any, like, Pokemon nearby? (laughs) (laughs) Where's my friend that left this plane of existence? But also... Where's my friend? 16 plus 8. He is not outside. I know, Ellie. Um... I walk into the main hall, like, rubbing my head, and I grab a cup of fantasy coffee and walk out the front door. Chevy, come here. What? What? That happens. You, you, you teleported. I'm dealing with a lot right now. Like Ellie's stressed out. You teleported. I think Ellie's stressed because I'm stressed. I don't mean to stress you, but I really need to drink this fantasy coffee. Let's, come on, Slowpoke. And I go back inside. <laughs> Ch- Ch- he wasn't talking to you, Chud. He was making fun of me. <laughs> and I walk in. You sullenly walk inside, close the door behind you. Pandora says, oh, you found him. I was taking a big poop. <laughs> he wasn't. He w- that's a lie. He just lied to your face. Hey. And I make a C on my chest. Oh. <laughs> Ellie, that's how Ellie feels Ellie about lying. Ellie doesn't like liars. <laughs> Yeah, he was taking a poop. Do you want a plate of vegetarian sausage? Me? Yeah. Wait, no, uh, no. Go, go back. What? What? Not the poop. What's going on? I have a question for you. All right. I caught this Pokemon, and it, 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 it walked through an image of you, and and Jake said it talked about y- y- you and a friend. Oh yeah. And I let Beldum out. Yeah. Oh. And I didn't know if it could... I told it maybe it could hang out with... It could, could see its friend. I don't know. Where did you find this? Uh, um, um, uh, clearing. What thing? The shrine? Yeah, there was there was a shrine, but there was also this writing, and I kind of understand it, but I'm not really sure about it, and it's similar to stuff on Pokeballs, but I'm not 100% sure that that's accurate. That's just Andrew trying to remember stuff from a while ago. <laughs> but... But it was kind of concerning, and then we saw some stuff. My third eye opened. And we got paralyzed. My third eye didn't open. Um, and I can't, I, uh, yeah, I think that's it. She just takes all of that in for a second. We also got attacked by big cats. I don't fear death anymore. And we caught them. We, we caught the big cats. And we didn't have to fight each other in order to catch the big cats, so I feel, like, really good about us. Mm, mm. And if I'm not scared of death, then I'm definitely not scared of other people, you know what right, I mean? Right, because we just figured we could attack the other people and not the Pokemon in the oh, fight. I mean, that too, but I meant oh, socially. Oh, yeah, that too. Um, I'm still afraid of people socially, though. As you're saying this, she's, like, gotten up from her seat and is going, and she's inspecting the beldam. It has floated over towards her, and she's sort of caressing the little eyeball thing a little bit and just inspecting it. Damn, I would appreciate you if you didn't caress my Pokemon. Finish your breakfast. Meet me out front. We'll talk. Oh. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, We've got a long ride. Just eat your breakfast. What's for breakfast? Vegetarian sausage. That makes me happy, I think. I'm sorry I lied. I just didn't want to cause a ruckus in front of people. I think I'm a Pokemon. 
No, I don't think that. I was joking. But you can talk to them. You, well, and you, you can use a Pokemon move. Uh, I think you are a Pokemon. Holy crap, I said it, and it actually makes more <laughs> sense now. <laughs> There's only one way to check. Nut me! <laughs> Jonah, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> uh, are we going to ignore nut me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, but I have to follow the thread that's in my mind. Okay. Have I ever, in any of my aunt or parents' studies or my own studies into Pokemon and their world, have I ever heard of a Pokemon that looks similar to a human man? Oh, no. And a has psychic man? abilities? A very sick man? <laughs> A man that needs help. <laughs> a man who perhaps uh, cannot speak. That is his dread curse. He, he, he because he has mime. psychic powers. And he's got like a big corpulent center and long <laughs> arms. Almost looks like a French clown. I would have to make a little check for me. What check? Uh, just to, uh, no, no, <laughs> History. no. My fey ancestry does not translate to being a Mr. Mime. <laughs> and the 23... You have heard of some sort of miming Pokemon, but uh, from what you know, it does not, like, aside from the fact that there is, like, a psychic association, like, Jayquiz doesn't look like Jake one. Jayquiz, I have to tell you, it's, it's probably, it's not one for one, but it might be, like, I don't know about your, your heritage, but there's, there's a, there's a, there's a Pokemon that looks like a human that's psychic. But all it can do is mime, so I don't think that necessarily correlates, but like... Also, Kieran did tell you yesterday, and you saw the Ditto, you know, transform into a humanoid form, so who knows what all's out there? <sighs> Man, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had to deal with a lot psychically Is your recently. mother or father a Ditto? I don't want to think about that. Okay, I'm just really concerned for you, and it's like, today, like, I woke up from a cuddle puddle and a little bit damp from Chud, but like, but we woke up and then you were gone, and then you were outside, and then you were gone again... And now I think you're a Pokemon, and you think you're Pokemon, and Ellie's stressed out. Ellie is okay. And then it's just very, very, it's very shocking. And I'm going to go get some food and start eating. I, start, I don't drink coffee. I start mental stating poorly. You start mental stating poorly. Just go ahead and give me a, just a wisdom, wisdom roll. Four. You are mental stating poorly. I love that every few episodes we have a complete mental breakdown <laughs> as a crew. Uh, as you are mental stating, you are like, you're just hyperventilating. Uh, and Henrik comes up with when like I stress, a stress I eat with a big plate of eggs. He's like, oh, "What's going on over here?" Nothing. You're doing all right. Yes. Uh huh. What's wrong with you? What's your problem? We've been thinking about terrible magics. Terrible magics. Oh, Wait. the TMs. Yes. What about it? Terrible magics. What? Yes. Is it possible for a real human to do a terrible magic? He squints his eyes at you, like, really hard. He's like... Academically speaking. Aca academically speaking. Book smart, lies, wise. I've heard you hear about this. What are you talking about? Second, is there such a thing that is more propellant than a catapult? Nothing that I know of. A okay, catapult cool. is the most... I mean, aside from, like, a Pokemon move or something, that's good. I mean, but that, if you're talking about that, some sort of physical construct... Yeah, that's like good. a mechanical... Uh, then, uh, a catapult is about as much as I got. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I heard a, f a friend of mine say that once that they could um, tra transfer themselves geographically over time and space. Almost exactly like uh, uh, like the, the Pokemon move teleport. But I can't remember my friend's name or what they looked like or where I knew them from. <laughs> Make a deception it's check. It's not me. Is that helping? <laughs> I don't think he needs it. <laughs> 17 plus 2? A 19? <laughs> We're being so bad. <laughs> Guess what we're not doing? Going on the quest. <laughs> <laughs> we're just <laughs> refusing to go on the quest. Well, that's part of the hey, I, I said Henrik walked up next yeah, to you guys. Yeah, we're following up the narrative thread. No, you're fine. We could have just like done this. what I did earlier and been like, I walk away. I, walk I leave. Away this. I feel like the sorcerer might know more than, than, no. than we do. And there's a narrative thread to un unfold here. He's a wizard and you know. You're talking about how this is all, it's all theoretical and it's a friend and you don't, you don't remember their name and stuff. And he just says, Cranthica. He just squints really hard and takes another big bite of eggs. And he's like, all right, son. I, but is I it, hated it, every second of that. But does it exist? Maybe if I met your friends, we could find out for sure. Cranthony? Well, I'll try to bring them. The friend's not me. Good. And he walks away. And I he eat. says out loud as he walks away. <laughs> I eat my vegan eggs. <laughs> Jayquees. What? He's, 
He's gonna dissect you. I straight up think he's gonna dissect I, me. He, he's German. He's gonna dissect you. The only people we can trust are ourselves and our Pokemans. I think so. And maybe Pandora. She seems cool. But we'll see after this conversation outside. Yeah. Buckle, wow, that really calmed me down. Thank Pokeball you for that. The man is good, too. Yeah. And Kieran has a hold on the Pretty, awful beast. Ex- I have to trust him. Expressly... Expressly the that terrible guy. magics man. It's that guy, mostly. <laughs> it's pretty much just that guy, huh? Okay, the only people we can trust are ourselves. Kieran, Gregor, uh, Scary Pandora. Lady, Pandora. Yes. Our Pokemon, their Pokemon, except for the Wretched Beast. And uh, maybe his Wobbuffet. Uh, it seems Brumbus Brumbus, the farmer? Yes, Brumbus. He's on our side. The cute he owes girl us from one. town. And that's it. What? The, the girl from town. And you're on. Photographic memory, did I catch that? <laughs> what, th- there was a cute girl in town? That he said a cute girl in town, not just a girl in town. I mean, I think that you physically heard him, so sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't say anything. So. <laughs> but you all finish your breakfast uh, as you. I bring. <laughs> I pack snack leftovers. You absolutely do. A little bag. Hey, does that count as a short rest? Pandora's just been waiting outside for 30 to minutes to an hour. He had 23 minutes. I'm back up to full health, so who's the ding-dong now? Oh, wow. That was a good roll. But with that, you all finish your breakfast, and you start walking toward the front door to meet Pandora outside to finally go on this dang mission. Can't wait to go on this dang mission. I'm a little scared, though. And that's where we'll end this episode. <laughs>